chaotic time, we have uh, the uh, uh, negative news is just pouring in, uh, especially in Kerala. The uh, pandemic is uh, just uh, 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 taking the life of a lot of people. Let us just remember all the people who are in the hospitals, who are in ventilators and uh, who are just suffering the very, very uh, dangerous um, uh, aspects of uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19. Uh, let us uh, believe that uh, very soon uh, we shall uh, just overcome all these uh, difficulties. May God bless each of you. Uh, I wish you all a wonderful day. Now uh, we just uh, continue our discussion of uh, uh, essays from the course they guessed uh, the text uh, prescribed for second semester students of uh, the undergraduate uh, students of the University of uh, uh, Calicut. Uh, it's in fact uh, the uh, course uh, which uh, help uh, you uh, improve your language skills. And as we all know, we have uh, four modules and we are in the third module on gender. And in this module, we know that we have uh, articles by Adrian Rich, K. Chopin and uh, uh, Lee Mokob or Mokobe. And we just uh, began the discussion of uh, the poem uh, by Lee Mokobe, the South African and later, of course, American uh, poet, Lee Mokabe. The title of uh, the poem, as we know, is What It's Like to Be Transgender. Yes, this poem is about the problems of uh, transgenders. It's about the identity crisis of the transgender community. We, uh, maybe our society, society all over the world recognizes male, female, okay, rarely the transgender or the third gender, the transgender. And I was, of course, very happy this morning when I read the news in today's Malayalam Manorama. Uh, last page, we have a small column in Malayalam Manorama of today in which the government decided to give a kind of grant of 1,500 rupees to all the transgender people in our country that is of course India. So that decision of uh, the government of India to give a kind of grant of 1,500 rupees to the transgender community, all the transgenders in the country is, uh, that shows the very commitment of the government for this, what is it, marginalized, uh, uh, this minority, gender group, the transgenders. Okay, that is something very, very good. And what does it mean? It means even the uh, government uh, of India, rather our government, the government of India wants to support these people. Okay, so uh, this is, this shows the changing attitude of uh, government's people to the transgenders. And now we have to come to the poem by Lee Mokobe, the South African, and uh, of course the American uh, poet, because he was born in South Africa. Later he comes to United States of America and he lives in United States of America. So we have always to remember the fact that he is from South Africa and lives and works in United States of America. And remember, uh, look at the date of uh, the birth of uh, Lee Mokobe is born in the year 1996 and he writes of course in the recent times and today remember even in a country like United States of America the condition of the transgenders is very very tough. So we know United States of America the great uh, United States of America is a country which is known for liberty, which is known for independence, which is ensuring the citizens of uh, the country, United, United States of America, freedom. And Lee Mokobe, as a transgender, 
in United States of America faced a lot of problems and he is just a representative of the transgender community and from this point we understand the fact that transgenders in America as well as many other parts of the world face a lot of problem and uh, the society, maybe the family, the family, the society, the state, the country, the world, okay, is rather unwilling to accept and receive the transgenders, to admit their identity. So uh, remember, this poem is about the identity crisis of the transgender people. And what do you mean by the identity crisis? You have an ident identity. I have an identity. Everyone is having an identity. Okay. You are the son and daughter uh, of your dad and mom. You are from okay, a peculiar family. You are from a peculiar uh, province or panjayat or maybe a district of a state could be Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka or maybe you are from India, you are from, of course, uh, Nigeria or Pakistan or Afghanistan or Spain or Portugal. Okay, that's your identity. You are a man from India. You are a woman from India. You are son of so-and-so, you are daughter of so-and-so. You are a student of St. Joseph's College of Green. You are a student of the University of Calicut. Okay, that's your identity. That's your identity. But look at the identity of the transgender people the transgenders, their parents, their family, their society, their residential association, their community, their province, their district, their state is unwilling to accept them. And there is always some kind of uh, uh, danger for these people. They always face kind of uh, uh, hostility. They are not uh, accepted, they are not welcomed, they are not received, they are not recognized. And here comes what is known as identity crisis. Yesterday, we just had a look at the uh, biographical details of uh, Lee Mokobe, the transgender poet. Today, we'll just have a quick reading once more so that, of course, those who didn't join us yesterday will have a, a better idea of uh, what is the biographical details of Lee Mokobe. So as we know, Lee Mokobe or Loretto Lee Mokobe was born in 1996 in Cape Town, South Africa. Mokobe is an award-winning slam poet and the founder of Vocal Revolutionaries, a volunteer-run literary organization focused on empowering the youth of South Africa to find their voice through art. The organization offers free workshops, motivational talks, seasonal slams, national, local performances, and mentoring. And uh, in the year 2013, Mokabe's South African slam poem or poetry team won, uh, yeah, which is in fact known as Vocal Revolutionaries, made it to the final stage of the Brave New Voices Global Poetry Competition an event of American Poetry Slam, which began in 1998 in Chicago. The first team from African continent to compete became second among the 55 teams in the world that were shortlisted. This is about the great uh, organization, Vocal Revolutionaries of uh, Lee Mokobe. And uh, in 2015, Lee came out as a transgender male now, Mokobe works as a teaching artist across the United States of uh, America. That's about his uh, career. He is in America right now, born in Africa, comes to, uh, of course, uh, America, and he works as a teaching artist, uh, a teacher who is teaching art. And uh, Lee Mokobe uh, has been a TED. I said yesterday about uh, TED, that is te technology, entertainment, and design. So TED is technology, entertainment, and design. It's in fact a non-profit organization, and uh, it is just spreading ideas, usually in the form of short, powerful talks, TED talks. You, you have plenty of TED talks in the YouTube, and he is a TED fellow, uh, just motivating people, youngsters, and uh, uh, he is working as a TED Fellow since 2015. 
and is a performer being a performer he wrote several plays and has made a few short films with the help of the media company soul pancake at the youtube space studio this is something more about him he has just written a number of poems slam poetry i told you slam, slam poetry is a kind of poetry uh, which is of course uh, uh, read out in uh, a group of uh, uh, people okay you gather you recite your poem and maybe the audience decides which is a good poem and of course a prize is given then and there at the time of recitation so besides being a slam poet uh, lee mokobe writes a lot of plays he also made short films and his short films can be uh, just uh, seen in the youtube and uh, of course these short films are just promoted by the media company soul pancake remember that and now more about him the 21 year old writer is now of course he is 26 years right or rather uh, is of course uh, in his 20s all right he is very young and he is a political activist who criticizes the lack of freedom of expression in south africa and the extreme right-wing politics of donald trump the president of the united states in okay poem titled the not yet burning country so the poem the not yet burning country is uh, a poem by lee mccobe which criticizes the policies of uh, the uh, donald trump united states of uh, uh, america government that you have to remember which uh, maybe exam point of view you can expect a question like which poem of uh, lee mccobe criticizes the policies of uh, Donald Trump, the then United States uh, president, okay? And now let us just look at the poem, what it's like to be transgender. I told you this poem is about the, uh, the kind of tension, uh, worry, panic, and identity crisis that is just uh, flashing through the mind of uh, a transgender, a person who is neither a man nor a woman. What it's like to be a transgender is a soul-bearing poem about what it feels like to be transgender in a highly gendered culture. So what is a gendered culture? A gendered culture is a culture in which we are given, uh, okay, uh, significance or uh, identity based on your gender, like male and female. That is gendered culture, okay? Male and gender roles like father, son, okay? Uh, similarly, right, uh, what should be, who should be a, a, a police officer, who should be a professor, who should be a lawyer, okay? So uh, a, a culture in which the gender, predominantly male and female, is significant is a culture which is gendered culture. And in such a, a culture or a community in which gender like male and female is significant what is the condition of uh, a transgender and the very pathetic condition of uh, a transgender is just uh, very very uh, uh, evocatively very powerfully represented by lee mccobe in this poem this poem powerfully addresses the gender identity crisis in the context of transphobia and the increased suicide rates among the transgender people. So remember, transphobia, what is a transphobia? The, the fear of uh, the transgender. So this poem is presenting uh, the, the uh, okay, transphobia, right? Uh, uh, it, it powerfully addresses the gender identity issues in the context of transphobia. Transphobia is the fear of the transgender. People, I said yesterday my uh, experience of uh, the transgenders. Okay, so I told about uh, how I encountered uh, the transgender people in Mumbai and how I was afraid uh, yesterday. So similarly, uh, this poem is a representation of uh, transphobia, fear of uh, the transgender, that is transphobia. Okay, and similarly, this poem is also representing the identity crisis of uh, the transgender people. And again, remember the increased suicide rates. 
So transgender people commit suicide. Why? Because they are not accepted in their family. They are not accepted in their society. They are not accepted in the state and the country. And often they are looked upon as a curse and they are not wanted. How do we feel if we are unwanted? How do you feel if you are unwanted at your home? It's really very, very painful being feel unwanted. Oh, my parents do not want me. My siblings do not want me. My friends do not want me. They consider me as a curse. Being unwanted, feeling unwanted is really very painful. And because of the pain of being unwanted, these people, the transgender people, often commit suicide. And this poem is about that too. It uh, powerfully addresses the gender identity issues in the context of transphobia and the increased suicide rates among the transgender people. In the autobiographical poem about the history of one's gender expression, Makobe describes how he came out as a transgender. So this poem is autobiographical. What, what is autobiographical is about oneself, right? So this poem is about Makobe and it's about his experience as a transgender. And uh, he tells uh, the very experience of what a transgender is. I was the mystery of an anatomy. Look at that. This is how Lee Makobe described how uh, uh, he feels as a transgender. I was the mystery of an anatomy. You don't know what your physique is. You know the anatomy of a body of a boy. You know the body or anatomy of a man. You know the body or anatomy of a woman. But who knows the anatomy of a transgender? Because the anatomy of transgenders differ from person to person. And uh, I was the mystery of an anatomy. A question asked but not answered. Tight dropping between awkward boy and apologetic girl. Okay, awkward boy. Not sure. Awkward is being right, uh, being in a difficult situation. Awkward. So he did not feel comfortable as a boy and apologetic girl is he is neither a boy nor a girl. That is a tight roping. What is tight roping? You know what tight tight roping is. Tight roping is what acrobats do. You have acrobatics. You have something like uh, maybe you have seen circuses, right? So uh, 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 tight roping is a kind of acrobatics in which you you tie it a rope between two uh, poles or two pillars, and you have to balance yourself and walk on the tight rope that is tight roping you need to concentrate yourself and you need a lot of skill for tight roping because uh, you can just uh, uh, maybe hurt yourself because you may even die when you just fall from of course the tight rope that is tight roping so the the very feeling of being a transgender is something like tight tight roping okay that is it right you can fall any any time you are not safe any time so i was the mystery of an anatomy a question asked but not answered tight roping between awkward boy and apologetic girl and when i turned 12 the boy face wasn't deemed cute anymore so remember when he became 12 years you know your your teenage begins when you are 12 years okay 10 11 12 13 14 these are your this is this is what is your adolescence you you change from being a boy or a girl into maybe of course a, a man or a woman and uh, uh, you will know that you are no more a child you you are growing up you are becoming a boy you are becoming a girl and you have the body you have the physique you have the anatomy of a girl you have the anatomy of a woman and you have the anatomy the physical features of a man all right and uh, you understand that yes you are becoming an adult but what about transgenders transgenders 
they are in difficulty because they neither become a man nor become a woman and that is an awkward situation awkward boy and apologetic girl apologetic girl why because girl has to be like a girl girls as per our conventional traditional society must be girlish must be girlish like uh, they should have long hair they should of course be uh, what is it uh, beautiful they should have their own dressing style hair style uh, manners okay this is these are all conventions of uh, the society so but this this transgender transgenders can neither be boys nor be girls and that is the pathetic condition of uh, transgender people and he says apologetic girl awkward boy sorry about being a boy very upset about being a girl because not a girl not a boy that's it right and when i turned 12 the boy face wasn't deemed cute anymore okay the boy face right there is something cute about being a boy 10 years 11 years okay 12 years again being cute about uh, a, a girl same age but you are neither a boy nor a girl and what is cute about you there is nothing cute about you you are something like a curiosity you are something like something like a strange human being my god think of that that's really very painful all right now we continue being a thoughtful description on bodies and the meanings poured into them the poem captures the identity crisis imposed on the gender people every now and then by the mainstream culture so we have the mainstream culture the mainstream culture is a kind of culture that is created by our society the mainstream culture is a kind of culture that is created by civilization again the mainstream culture is a kind of culture that is created by our religions and holy books look at the holy books yeah look at uh, uh, look, look at the religions you have adam and eve adam a man eve a woman all right so their physique their anatomy and this, this is what is okay uh, 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 religions about this is what is civilization speaks about this is what culture talks about gendered culture and community where we have man and woman no space for transgenders even in 21st century that is the condition of these these people and i i told you this morning i felt very happy because central government of india central government of india decided to give a grant of 1500 rupees to all transgenders look at today's malala manorama last page you can see government of india decides to give a grant of 1500 to transgenders because they don't get a job employment salary wage or anything they are the unwanted people in our community and they are often in uh, a predicament in difficult situation so at the time of uh, pandemic this pandemic covid 19 central government wants to do something to help them that's something that shows the very changing attitude of governments to transgenders okay but uh, the condition of transgenders in us as we see in lee mccop's poem is quite bad look at that that's in united states of america right let's continue uh, towards the end of uh, the gripping exploration of identity and transition the poet turns into a pessimistic mood end of the poem there is no optimism there is only pessimism negativity no hope condition of uh, uh, of of transgenders is not going to improve it is going to be difficult it's going to be bad that is the feeling of lee mccob that is the feeling of transgenders in united states of america because day by day hundreds of transgenders die i said die and this can be 
often suicide accident and murder quite often Tra transgenders are killed transgenders are assassinated because people in united states of america people in dif different part of the world are not ready to accept the so called transgenders i think a year before we we read in the newspaper we had seen it in the television channels of kerala there was such such issue transgenders were beaten up by the police in kolikot transgenders were beaten up by the police in ernakulam similarly transgenders face a lot of problem in different parts of the country the world right let's just come to uh, the end of the introduction towards the end of the gripping exploration of identity and transition the poet turns into a pessimistic mood having recognized once non acceptance in a world where religions preach universal love and this is something very very ironic this is something very very uh, paradoxical this is something very very contradictory because ours uh, ours is a culture or or cultures everywhere or anywhere in the world is very very religious uh, really uh, religious oriented and almost all the religions of the world preach about love love yourself as you love maybe okay love your enemies love your enemies as you love th th thyself all right love your enemies as you uh, i mean uh, as you love yourself that is the prayer of uh, maybe most of the people our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on us in heaven give us today our daily bread as we and forgive us sins as we forgive those who sin against us this is what we pray as we forgive those who sin against us all right we preach love religions preach love but the condition of transgenders is very pathetic although we say love your enemy as you love thyself all right this is the great uh, paradox now uh, at this uh, uh, this is the right moment to begin the poem let us just uh, i'll of course go for a quick reading of the entire poem because this poem is so meaningful uh, it's rather long but still we shall have a quick uh, re recitation and uh, that will help us to have a very comprehensive idea of uh, this beautiful poem and afterwards we'll just explain it uh, we'll look at the references please listen uh, what it's like to be transgender lee mccall the first time i uttered a prayer i i, I was in a glass stained cathedral I was kneeling long after the congregation was on its feet dip both hands into holy water trace the trinity across my chest my tiny body drooping like a question mark all over the wooden pew i asked jesus to fix me and when he did not answer i befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn and sal my mouth would dissolve like sugar on tongue but shame lingered as an aftertaste and in an attempt to reintroduce me to sanctity my mother told me of the miracle i was said i could grow up to be anything i want i decided to be a boy it was cute i had snap back toothless grin use skin knees and street cred played hide and seek with what was left of my gall i was it the winner to a game the other kids couldn't play i was the mystery of an anatomy a question asked but not answered tight roping between awkward boy and apologetic girl 
And when I turned 12, the boy face wasn't deemed cute anymore. It was met with nostalgic aunts who miss seeing my knees in the shadow of skirts, who reminded me that my kind of attitude would never bring me a husband home, that I exist for heterosexual marriage and childbearing, and I swallow their insults along with their slurs naturally. I did not come out of the closet. The kids at my school opened it without my permission, called me by name I did not recognize, said lesbian, but I was more boy than girl, more Ken than Barbie. It had nothing to do with hating my body. I just love it enough to let it go. I treat it like a house. And when your house is falling apart, you do not evacuate. You make it comfortable enough to house all your insides. You make it pretty enough to invite guests over. You make the floorboard strong enough to stand on. My mother fears I have named myself after fading things. As she counts the echoes left behind by Mia Hall, Leela Alcorn, Blake Brockington, she fears that I'll die without a whisper, that I'll turn into what a shame conversations at the bus stop. She claims I have turned myself into mausoleum, that I am a walking casket. News headlines have turned my identity into a spectacle. Bruce Jenner on everyone's lips while the brutality of living in this body becomes an asterisk at the bottom of equality pages. No one ever thinks of us as human because we are more ghosts than flesh. Because people fear that my gender expression is a trick, that it exists to be perverse, that it ensnares them without their consent, that my body is a feast for their eyes and hands. And once they have fed off my cure, they will regurgitate all the parts they do not like. They will put me back into the closet, hang me with all the other skeletons. I'll be the best attraction. Can you see how easy it is to talk people into coffins, to misspell their names on gravestones? And people still wonder why there are boys rotting. They go away in high school hallways. They are afraid of becoming another hashtag in a second, afraid of classroom discussions becoming like judgment day. And now oncoming traffic is embracing more transgender children than parents. I wonder how long it will be before the trans suicide not start to feel redundant before we realize that our bodies become lessons about sin, way before we learn how to love them. Like God didn't save all this breath and mercy. Like my blood is not the wine that washed over Jesus' feet. My prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. Maybe I am finally fixed. Maybe I just don't care. Maybe God finally listened to my prayers. Okay, so this is the beautiful poem, What It's Like Transgender by Lee Mokob. And as we read this long poem, from beginning till the end, we understand how a transgender 
a small boy, maybe a baby, a child, a boy, an adolescent, a young man feels when he realizes the fact that he is a transgender. Okay. Lee Makobe has very, very vividly represented or presented the very feelings of transgenders. How he or she experiences his life as he grows up. Everybody grows up. Transgenders also. So, as you grow up, okay, you understand. You become a boy, you become a man, you become a girl, you become a lady. And you are accepted in your society, in your family, in your country. But how about a transgender? He understands that his body is not like the body of others. All right. Let's look at the first part of the poem. The first time... I turned, I uttered a prayer, was in a glass-stained cathedral. So this is about uh, the childhood of uh, the transgender, autobiographical emotions and experiences of uh, Lee Mokob, Mokobe. Okay, so the first time I uttered a prayer was in, gla in a glass-stained cathedral. So glass-stained cathedral is nothing but, it is of course, uh, uh, the, the, the cathedral or a church, it's a cathedral. You know, a cathedral is uh, a church, a main church under which there are branches, different churches under a cathedral. Okay, so you have uh, uh, the uh, diocese, then you have foreign, then uh, uh, you have, of course, the foreign church, uh, which could be, of course, the cathedral, right? So the first time I uttered a prayer, was glass stained cathedral. So Lee Makobe prayed for the first time inside a cathedral. And how did he pray? I was kneeling long after the congregation was on its feet. R remember, look at that. Sadarna Palil Kurbani in Prathana Karimbo, Kariana at a Ladan Okirikim. Kurbana Kanangla Kurbana Sierra Kariamati Kalkar Portra Nipoana at Golomo. Alangla Sanate. Prathana Langarinator, Pata Langarinator, Algare, Patanus Talagum, Salankaliakum. Okay. Uh, but here, Lee Makobe, like many other pious and devotional people, uh, even after the congregation departed, Pradana Pata Algare Laurum, Allegla Janangal Kuprathikiana, Elari Puigarnitum, even out of Mutan Mutipai Prathikiana, Deome and the Prathana Kerkaname. End of Prashna Pariyar Chiran. Any kind of manasila will not be able to do that. But he still continues. So people who have problems will go on praying despite after the Holy Kurbana, Holy Mass or uh, the prayer, whatever was taking place in the ch church. So Lee Makobe, I was kneeling long after the congregation was on its feet. From this you can understand that long after, long after means very, very sincere, earnest prayers of Lee McCobb. I was kneeling long after the congregation was on its feet. Dip both hands into holy water. Look at that. What does he do? He prays sincerely. And you know, you go to any cathedral, you go to most of, most of the churches. On the wall, you can see uh, uh, some cup is just... Uh, uh, concreted or just uh, kept on the wall in the church and holy water is kept inside the cups on the wall. Namala Palil Puanangil Kanam, Ningla Chalapalil Kan, Ella Palilum, Rivashi Undagam, Mikapalil Kana, Palide Bithil, Bithiod Tana Cherta, the Uru Kapu Bole, Alangila Namala China Clay Lola, Copa Volola, Patratilla. Venjiricha Vellam, holy water in the English for him, which it undow. Abba Bakta Itula Vishwasil Lavum, E. Holy Water, the Avade Virelo Kamuki, Netiel, Urshaka Varicheta, with Avani Putanabasta Mani Namathan Parni Pratiche, Avade Palinarangi Pogulu. Abba E. Venjiricha Vellam, Alangila Adana Anam Vellam, Anan Water, Holy Water, Avana Palapiril Parim, Venjiricha Jellam, 
priest bless cheyda water okay so it is very powerful it's very powerful apo now that you just uh, have a, a little bit of uh, this holy water on you on your brow on your head on your body you are going to have the uh, protection uh, the, the the very uh, safety of god that's your faith so here dip both hands into holy water okay lima ko by the transgender dips both his hands normally people dip one finger or two or three fingers right or one hand maximum here he is dipping both hands dip both hands into holy water trace the trinity across my chest in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit pidavinte putrinte parishuthalmaavinte naam devame ene kaathu kollanamme samrakshichu kollanamme adeyam prarthikkiyana i dip both hands into holy water trace the trinity across my chest okay so uh, in the name of the father you begin from your head in the name of the father and of the son on your chest and of the holy spirit on your shoulder okay appo nammala ende buddhi ende chinda ende vaakugal ende aagrahangal and 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 okay everything about me must be guided by god that's why on your head in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit right trace the trinity across my chest my tiny body drooping like a question mark and remember look at that this is very very wonderful you have a, a figure of speech here okay my tiny body small boy a very small boy നമ്മൾ കുട്ടികളായിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഭയങ്കര പ്രാർത്ഥന ആയിരിക്കുമല്ലോ എല്ലാവരും അല്ലെ ഭയങ്കര വിശ്വാസമായിരിക്കും കുട്ടികളുടെ വിശ്വാസം ഭയങ്കരമാണ് അവർ ശക്തമായിട്ട് വിശ്വസിക്കും ഞാനിപ്പോൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച എന്ത് നടക്കും ദൈവം എന്നെ സഹായിക്കും ഈ ജീസസ് വിൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് മീ കൃഷ്ണ വിൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് മീ അള്ള വിൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് മീ യു ബിലീവ് സോ മച്ച് ബിക്കോസ് യു ആർ ഇന്നസെൻറ്റ് ഓക്കെ സോ ട്രേസ് ദ ട്രിനിറ്റി അക്രോസ് മൈ ചെസ് മൈ ടൈനി ബോഡി ഡ്രൂപ്പ് ഇൻ ലൈക്ക് എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ മാർ സോ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ boy his body is drooping like a question mark i don't know what i am i'm not a boy i'm not a girl what am i that is drooping like a question mark my body drooping drooping like a question mark because i don't know what i am all over the wooden pew all over the wooden pew remember uh, wooden pew is in fact uh, a you have the ningal palli povane kana nammal ivide devagiri pallilo allengil mikkoru pallilo okka poya kana ningal avade marathil theertha thekilo allengil plavilo aanjililo okka theerthittulla neenda chairgal kana theater la kolla pole chairgal so uh, such a wooden chair the the very uh, chair or the wooden seats is what you mean by the pew there so all over the wooden pew my tiny body drooping like a question mark all over the wooden pew palliyilulla ee marathinte kasera ella oru prathega reethil aayirikkum namukku adil irikkam adinte nammal muttu kuthumbo munbilulla benchinte allengi aa benchinte neenda benchukal aanallo adinte piragu vashathu അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ നമ്മൾ നമുക്ക് കാല് മുട്ട് കുത്താനായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു മരം കൂടെ ഉണ്ടാകും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പിലുള്ള ബെഞ്ചിൻ്റെ ചാരി ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഭാഗത്തേക്ക് നമ്മൾ മുട്ട് കുത്തി നിൽക്കുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് തല ചായ്ച്ചു വെക്കാനായിട്ട് പറ്റും അങ്ങനെ തല ചായ്ക്ക് വെച്ച് വെക്കുന്ന മുട്ട് കുത്തി നിൽക്കുമ്പോൾ തല മുമ്പിട്ട് ഇങ്ങനെ നിൽക്കുമല്ലോ റൈറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ തല നമ്മൾ വെക്കുന്ന ആ ഒരു പടിക്കാണ് വുഡൻ പ്യൂ എന്ന് പറയണേ സോ ഓൾ ഓവർ ദ വുഡൻ പ്യൂ കുമ്പിട്ട് തല മരത്തിൽ ചാരി കുട്ടിയുടെ ബോഡി നോക്കുവാണെങ്കിൽ കാണാം ഒരു ചോദ്യ ചിഹ്നം പോലെയാണ് ഈ ഈ നമ്മുടെ ഈ കഥാപാത്രം ഹു ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ ബോയ് ലി മൊക്കോബെ ഐ മൈ ചൈനി ബോഡി ഡ്രൂപ്പിംഗ് ലൈക്ക് എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ മാർക്ക് ഓൾ ഓവർ ദ വുഡൻ പ്യൂ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ വെരി ഫീലിംഗ് ഓഫ് എ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ ബോയ് യങ് ബോയ് ഓർ ഗേൾ വട്ട് ആ മൈ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ മാർക്ക് ഐ എം എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ മാർക്ക് ആ മൈ ബോയ് നോ ആ മൈ ഗേൾ നോ what am i don't know question mark very painful very painful you don't know what you are think of yourself okay think of each of us namaku cheriya oru paniyo jaladosho okke ippo varumbolla nammada aa avasthe onnu aalochichu nokku nammal vallaandu pedichu pogum oh ende devame idu covid aano prashna aavo admit aandi varuvo okay right because of this pandemic we are afraid and similarly 
മേബി ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് സം പ്രോബ്ലം ഓൺ യുവർ ബോഡി എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു ശാരീരിക അസ്വാസ്ഥ്യം ഉണ്ടാകുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ നമ്മൾ എത്ര ടെൻഷൻ അടിക്കും ഒരു ചെറിയ സ്കിൻ ഡിസീസ് വരുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ എത്ര ടെൻഷൻ അടിക്കും ഒന്നും വേണ്ട മുഖക്കുരു വരുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ നമുക്ക് എത്രമാത്രം ടെൻഷൻ ഉണ്ട് അവിടെ ഇവിടെ ഓരോ മുഖക്കുരു ഒക്കെ വരുമ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളൊന്നും ടെൻഷൻ അടിക്കരുത് കേട്ടോ ചെറിയ ചെറിയ മുഖക്കുരു ഒക്കെ വരുമ്പോൾ ഒന്നും ടെൻഷൻ അടിക്കുന്നു മുഖക്കുരു ഒക്കെ ഞാനൊക്കെ ചെറുതായിരിക്കുന്ന സമയത്ത് പത്തും പന്ത്രണ്ടും വയസ്സും ഒക്കെ ഉള്ള സമയത്ത് എനിക്ക് മുഖക്കുരു വരാൻ തുടങ്ങി അപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ പതിനഞ്ച് പതിനാറ് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ഒരു പത്ത് മുപ്പത് വയസ്സാവുന്നോടം വരെ മുഖക്കുരു ഇപ്പോഴും വരും വല്ലപ്പോഴും ഒക്കെ മുഖക്കുരു റൈറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ബിക്കോസ് ദാറ്റ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ മേ ബി യുവർ സ്കിൻ ഓക്കെ മേ ബി യു യു ടേക്ക് സോ മച്ച് ഓഫ് ഫാറ്റി ഫുഡ് so much of oil fried items and all okay you may have maybe when you take maybe eggs and all okay i can say maybe when i consume two three eggs all right uh, uh, i have pimples like don't worry about that okay so once uh, in adolescence of course you have as a teenager you may have pimples don't worry about that okay so uh, it will just go Uh, and and your skin your face skin will be normal and you will have of course uh, a fair skin later don't worry about anything of that sort okay it can be just normal very soon so don't be upset right but we can say that you will be upset i'll be upset we'll be upset but think of this problem of a transgender boy he is like a question mark and whom do you ask you will of course ask sometimes if you if you feel free to you will talk to your parents about what's like this ama why is this oh all right maybe they will help you of course you have to talk to them all right you can talk to your friends you can talk to your parents similarly we often pray unto god also god what is this please help me similarly here lee makobe my tiny body drooping like a question mark all over the wooden pew i asked jesus to fix me and when he did not answer I befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn and salve my mouth would be so like sugar on tongue but shame lingered as an aftertaste this is what makobe as a catholic or as a christian believes very much in jesus and he is asking jesus please help me jesus please fix me jesus please resolve my anatomic problem i asked jesus to fix me and when he did not answer okay he prays every day pashe idu maaru he is a transgender no prayer can change him no prayer can change him doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray okay prayer can give you some happiness maybe some hope some confidence like that is of course uh, what psychology say so i i asked jesus to fix me and when he did not answer i befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn and salve my mouth would dissolve like sugar on tongue but shame lingered as an aftertaste okay so now he prays and prays and prays to jesus but uh, his prayer is not heard his condition is continuing like the same and i befriend afterwards kore prarthichu kaiyumbo nammal prarthichittu kaari illa nu manasilagu നമ്മൾ അപ്പോൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യും യു വിൽ ബിക്കം സൈലൻറ്റ് ഐ ബിഫ്രണ്ടഡ് സൈലൻസ് ഇൻ ദ ഹോപ്സ് ദാറ്റ് മൈ സിൻ വുഡ് ബേൺ ആൻഡ് സാൽവ് സാൽവ് ഈസ് ഓക്കെ സാൽവ് ഈസ് ടു സേവ് ഫ്രോം ഫയർ സാൽവ് എസ് എൽ വി സാൽവ് ഈസ് ടു സേവ് ഫ്രോം ഫയർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് മേ ബി യുവർ യുവർ സിൻ യു ഹാവ് എ സിൻ ആൻഡ് യു ആർ യുവർ സിൻ വിൽ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് സേവ് യു all right you just pray and i befriended silence in the hope that my sin would uh, burn and sell sal my mouth would dissolve like sugar on tongue so like sugar melting or dissolving on your tongue okay maybe you have sin and your sin will of course just uh, um uh, slowly slowly you will uh, save yourself from of course uh, uh, maybe Uh, you will save yourself right okay slowly slowly right so i befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn okay as you grow up your sin would burn that's what the boy thinks and of course save him from fire that is save the boy from of course uh, maybe a big big crisis or hell as you see okay i befriended silence in the hopes that my sin would burn and sal my mouth would dissolve like sugar on 
term. So we have uh, figures of speech coming repeatedly, like is there, right? Look at that, my tiny body drooping like a question mark simile, comparing his body to a question mark. Here again, you have uh, another question mark, like uh, my sin would burn and salt my mouth would dissolve like uh, my sin uh, would, uh, would, would burn and salt my mouth, okay? My sin will just uh, melt uh, uh, and, and just uh, salt my mouth, save my mouth from fire, like sugar, uh, sugar on tongue. Okay, and another comparison that is again a simile comparison. Okay, uh, then but shame lingered as an aftertaste. So now maybe you pray a lot. Your condition doesn't change. You think that it will just uh, become, you will become okay. And just remember, like, just like uh, sugar melting on your tongue. Okay, sugar has melted, but uh, the sweetness is still on your tongue. Similarly, shame is still there. You, why? Because despite after praying, you don't change. You are still the same transgender boy and you are afraid, ashamed of yourself. That's why shame lingered. Lingered means stayed, continued as an aftertaste. And in an attempt to in, reintroduce me, in, me to sanctity. So now remember the boy, Lee Mokobe, or boy, uh, the child transgender, praise, prime praise and praise. And uh, uh, the, the child transgender comes to, comes to its, uh, uh, his or her parents. Here, Lee Mokobe comes to his mother and asks mother, Mom, why am I like this? Mom, why am I like this? I've been praying. Why am I like this? And, uh, and in an attempt to reintroduce me to sanctity. What is sanctity? Sanctity is uh, sacredness or purity. So my mother wanted to make me pure or uh, sacred and in order to make me uh, pure or sacred or rather in order to make me normal, my mother told me of the miracle I was. So my mother says that, yeah, okay, I am different from other boys and girls. I, uh, I have the body of a transgender and mother tells me that I am a miracle. This is how his mother is trying to console him, comfort him. Okay. And in an attempt to reintroduce me to sanctity, my mother told me of the miracle I was said. And mother is consoling. This is what a mother can do. Mother cannot tell him that you are a transgender or uh, you, you, you are a minority gender minority, you have this problem, you're not a boy, okay? So as a young boy, he will not understand that. So mother tells him, you are a miracle, okay? You are a miracle. And mother again gives him a solution. What should you do? My mother told me of the miracle I was and said I could grow up to be anything I want. You are a miracle. And uh, mother tells, okay, you can be anything you want. Maybe if you want, you can grow as a boy. Maybe if you want, you can grow, go, grow as a girl. Do whatever you like. You are different. You are a miracle. This is how his mother is consoling him, comforting him. My mother told me of the miracle I was, said I could grow up to be anything I want. And I decided to be boy. Okay. So look at uh, the autobiographical details of uh, Lee McCobey. He is a transgender male. Lee Makobe is a transgender male. Similarly, transgenders, there are transgender male and transgender female. All right? So more masculinity, more like a man. And I decided to be a boy. It was cute. So now, as a child, Lee Makobe or this transgender, okay, he is more boyish and he decided to be a boy. So as a child, he lives his life as a boy. It was cute those days, eight years, seven years, eight years, nine years, it is cute. Yeah, boy. 
no worries nobody understands because you don't have the growth in your body you don't have more uh, femininity or masculinity in you you are a boy i i was i decided to be a boy it was cute it was beautiful it's lovely i had snap back what is snap back snap back is the kind of smile children have very quick smile children have and it's very attractive and lovely so i had snap back toothless grin okay that is the smile of this boy very very lovely and cute is the smile of this boy and uh, i had snap back very beautiful attractive smile and toothless grin toothless because seven years eight years you lose your teeth and uh, you are still very childish and uh, okay uh, your 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 toothless grin is still attractive that is it you skinned knees and street cred what is that skin knees and street cred skinned knees remember is a kind of trouser fashionable like you have baggy trousers slim fit trousers slim fit jeans baggy jeans regular fit formal jeans so this is a fashion uh, of uh, the dress right like uh, uh, i used skinned knees it's a kind of fashionable dress of the time a street cred street cred what is street cred street cred is being credible in the street street credibility being acceptable and credible to everybody in the street okay that is street cred okay that is this transgender when he grows up when he is 7 8 9 and 10 years his mother asked him to be whatever he like he can be either a boy or a girl is a transgender his mother also knew and told him you are a miracle you can decide what you want to be you can maybe dress like a boy dress like a girl and he dressed like a boy he dressed in a very fashionable way and he is accepted then only then played hide and seek with what was left of my goal okay my goal what is his goal his goal is to be a man his goal is to be a a, a male and uh, played hide and seek with what was left of my goal okay so there is some boyishness in him there is some masculinity in him there is some something that of a man in him and he dresses like a man and he goes out uh, uh, like like a man and uh, he lives uh, okay his ambition is to be a man and he lives his life like that i was it i was it what does it mean yeah i had all this problem but uh, i just acted dress like a boy and now comes the problem now uh, okay there were family members who thought that uh, this transgender boy or rather this 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 individuality this transgender can be a girl family uncles aunt and all so this is in the next stanza he tells us the kind of uh, problems he faced uh, people have different uh, attitudes towards him and the different attitudes of the people is mentioned here the winner to a game the other kids couldn't play the winner to a game the other kids kids couldn't play look at that why the winner to a game what's what's the game this transgender is playing hide and seek why hide and seek he is hiding his identity what is his identity transgender so he he is hiding his identity of a transgender because he doesn't want to be that and he is pretending to be a boy okay and uh, okay he dr dresses like a boy but at times people just wonder there is something strange about him okay 
and he he says the winner to a game the other kids couldn't play why he is the only transgender other kids are either boys or girls but the speaker of the poem is transgender no one else is transgender and he is playing hide and seek okay transgender aanu nalla karyam marachu vechittu jeevikkunnadinaanu nammal ivide hide and seek nu parayana and he is the winner because nobody knows that he is a transgender then but later as he grows up into maybe uh, a, a grown up like uh, 18 years 19 years 20 years 25 years people will understand that he is not a man he is not a woman he is a transgender but now young 9 years 8 years 10 years nobody knows his real identity and he is playing hide and seek the winner to a game the other kids couldn't play i was the mystery of an anatomy a question asked but not not answered and he is asking himself what am i who am i no answer tight roping between awkward boy and apologetic girl is neither a boy nor a girl and he is tight roping what is tight roping i told i told some time ago tight roping is what acrobatics do you have uh, acrobatics all right acrobats 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 are circus people skill people okay and they just tie a, a, a rope from one pole to another pole or from one pillar to another pole another pillar and they walk on a rope you will be holding a stick in your hands you will balance yourself you will walk on the rope that is tight roping very very difficult normal people cannot do that unless and until you are very trained you cannot do that and you can be in danger any time because you may fall down that's the life of a transgender a transgender's life is just tight roping like walking on a tighter rope and uh, he felt like uh, an awkward boy not a boy not a real boy an awkward boy and apologetic girl neither neither a boy nor a girl awkward boy and apologetic girl and when i turned 12 all right 12 years on the border of teenagers 13 very soon is going to be 13 when i turned 12 the boy face was in deemed cute anymore 12 vayasai avanne avante balan aayittirikkunna avasthayilulla aa nishkalangadeyum saundaryavum bangi okka nashtapadugana the boy face was in deemed cute anymore so from 12 onwards he is no more boyish no more cute no more lovely and there were family members uncles aunts and all who looked at him a oh, beautiful boy beautiful girl handsome boy handsome girl all right nothing doing now he has changes he is no more a boy no more a girl he is a transgender it was i i turned 12 the boy face was in gym cute anymore it was met with nostalgic aunts who miss seeing my knees in the shadow of skirts so there were there were aunts and all these aunts thought that uh, okay this transgender is a girl and now as a transgender boy he is neither boy nor girl but he has more boyishness and uh, hence he cannot be a girl so what does he do he wears long trousers and he covers his legs because he has hairs on his legs and there were aunts who thought that uh, uh, this transgender is a girl and they just want him to wear the skirts they want him to be more girlish nammade ee kadha paathrathinte ee transgender inde aunty maar undu avaru palarum vicharichunnathu idu oru penkutti aanannu അപ്പൊ പെൺകുട്ടി ആണ് അല്ലെ ആകണം എന്ന് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്ന കുടുംബത്തിലെ അമ്മാവി അമ്മ അമ്മായിമാരെല്ലാം ഇവൻ ഒരു പെൺകുട്ടികളുടെ കൂട്ട് ഈ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ പെൺകുട്ടികളുടെ കൂട്ട് ഒരു പാവാടമൊക്കെ ഇട്ട് നടക്കുന്ന കാണാനായിട്ട് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോ 
but what does he do he thinks that he is a boy he wants to be a boy so he doesn't show his legs uh, uh okay because his legs are not like the legs of girls you know uh, see uh, boys or men have more hairs on their limbs but here uh, he has the limbs of a man and his limbs are not like the limbs of a woman so he cannot show his limbs and now he is just covering his limbs and he is behaving like a like a man or a boy and those aunts who wanted him to be like girlish just blame him okay nee oru penkutiye pole perumaranam jeevikanam engil mathramana ninakku nalla kudumba jeevitham kittu bhartavine kittu okay ennakke avaru parayan thodangiyana pakshe ivan ariyam ivan oru penkuti alla ഈ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡറിനറിയാം താൻ ഒരു സ്ത്രീ അല്ല തനിക്കൊരു സ്ത്രീയുടെ ശരീരമല്ല അതേപോലെ തന്നെ ഒരു പുരുഷന്റെ ശരീരമല്ല പക്ഷെ കൂടുതൽ പുരുഷ ലക്ഷണങ്ങൾ ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് ഈസ് ജസ്റ്റ് ട്രൈങ് ടു ബി എ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ മെയിൽ നൗ ആൻഡ് വെൻ ഐ ടേൺ ട്വൽവ് ദ ബോയ് ഫേസ് വാസ് ഇൻ ഡീം ക്യൂട്ട് എനി മോർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് മെറ്റ് വിത്ത് നൊസ്റ്റാൾജിക് ആൺസ് ഹു മിസ് സീയിങ് മൈ നീസ് ഇൻ ദി ഷാഡോ ഓഫ് സ്കേർട്ട്സ് who reminded me that my kind of attitude would never bring me a husband bring a husband home so these aunts they said that you're not going to have a husband because you don't have girlishness you don't have any any womanishness you're not going to have a husband that i exist for heterosexual marriage and child bearing and these aunts they said that you you are a girl you must be for heterosexual sexuality heterosexuality is the kind of sexuality in marriage between man and woman and in heterosexuality of course a man and woman relationship sexual relationship children will be born that is the normal normally marriage is for reproduction marriage is for child bearing giving birth so okay you must be like a girl only then you will have a husband only then you can give birth to a um, child and uh, conventional uh, attitude of our uh, gendered society okay ഒരാള് പുരുഷനായിരിക്കണം സ്ത്രീ ആയിരിക്കണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പ്രശ്നമാണ് നിങ്ങൾ പലപ്പോഴും ഓർക്കുന്നുണ്ടാവും നമ്മളെ ചാന്തുപൊട്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ സിനിമയും അതുപോലെ ഒരുപാട് നല്ല സുന്ദരമായിട്ടുള്ള സിനിമകളെല്ലാം ഉണ്ട് ഈ ഒരു വിഷയം ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡറിന്റെ പ്രശ്നം കൈകാര്യം ചെയ്യുന്ന നല്ല സിനിമകൾ മലയാളത്തിൽ ഒരുപാടുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ജയസൂര്യയുടെ പല റോളുകൾ അതുപോലെ ദിലീപിന്റെ ചില റോളുകൾ ഒക്കെ നമുക്ക് കാണാം അപ്പൊ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ബിഗ് പ്രോബ്ലം ദി ഐഡന്റിറ്റി ക്രൈസിസ് ഓഫ് ദി ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡേഴ്സ് റൈറ്റ് ഐ സ്വാളോ ദിയർ ഇൻസൾസ് എലോങ് വിത്ത് ദിയർ സ്ലേഴ്സ് okay slur slur is the insult so these aunts and uncles of the family just uh, insult this transgender oh what a what a child what a person uh, it is it, i don't know whether uh, she is a why is she acting like that this kind of insult coming from family naturally i did not come out of the closet naturally i did not did not come out of the closet so here closet has closet is in fact like a metaphor closet what is closet closet nu nammala bathroom la closet alla udheshikka closet is a room closet is a room here closet is your body 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 you are in your room so naturally i did not come out of the closet what does it mean because of all these problems because of the insult of the members of my family i did not reveal my identity ende kudumbathile aunty marum ammavumarum okke enne vallaand insult cheythu nee oru penkutiye pole perumaarunnilla nee oru pennalle nee penna aano endha ingane alle nee oru aan aano endha ingane idu rendum alla kutti paavam അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ പറയുമ്പോൾ അവൻ അവന്റെ ഐഡന്റിറ്റി അവൻ ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ ആണെന്നുള്ളത് അവൻ മറച്ചു വെക്കുകയാണ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് നാച്ചുറലി ഐ ഡിഡ് നോട്ട് കം ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ക്ലോസറ്റ് ഐ കവേഡ് മൈ ഐഡന്റിറ്റി ഐ ട്രൈ ടു കവർ മൈ ഐഡന്റിറ്റി ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് ഹിഡ് മൈ സെൽഫ് ഓൾ ദ ടൈം ദി കിഡ്സ് മൈ സ്കൂൾ ഓപ്പൺ ഇറ്റ് വിതൗട്ട് മൈ പെർമിഷൻ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ബി എനിങ് ദ കിഡ്സ് അറ്റ് സ്കൂൾ സ്കൂളിൽ അവന്റെ കൂടെ പഠിക്കുന്ന കുട്ടികളെല്ലാം ദേ വുഡ് ബി ജസ്റ്റ് ലുക്കിംഗ് അറ്റ് ഹിം ഓക്കെ ഇതെന്താ ഇവൻ ഇങ്ങനെ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഹി ആൻഡ് ദേ വാണ്ട് ടു നോ വാട്ട് ഹി ഈസ് ദേ ബി ജസ്റ
ഗോയിങ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ഹിം ഇവൻ ആണാണോ ഇവൻ പെണ്ണാണോ ഇവൻ എന്താ സംഭവം അറിയാനായിട്ട് ഈ കൂടെ ഉള്ള സഹപാഠികളെല്ലാം ഇവന്റെ പുറകെ നടക്കും ദാറ്റ്സ് എഗൈൻ എ വെരി ഫെസ്റ്ററിങ് ആൻഡ് വെരി വെരി സ്റ്റൈഫിളിങ് ആൻഡ് സഫോക്കേറ്റിംഗ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ദ കിഡ്സ് അറ്റ് മൈ സ്കൂൾ ഓപ്പൺ ഇറ്റ് വിതൗട്ട് മൈ പെർമിഷൻ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് മീൻ sometimes whenever sometimes when he is in the bathroom when he is in the toilet to bathroom they would be just opening to see his identity to, to see his anatomy what is he they call me by a name i did not recognize said lesbian and because of the behavior the strange behavior and the problems of this transgender those students his classmates called him a lesbian and we know the real meaning of lesbian lesbian is a a girl or a woman having sex with another girl or a woman that is lesbian but these children do not know what a lesbian is they know that this person is something this transgender their classmate is some having some difference and they just call him lesbian because they know that he has some mystery with him uh said lesbian but i was more boy than a girl i was more boy than girl although they called him lesbian he lee mccobe says that i was more boy than girl njan penkutti allayirunnu njan koodudal oru aankutti ayirunnu but i was neither all right i was more boy than girl more ken than barbie ken than barbie and remember ken and barbie are okay uh, our uh some something like uh, boban and molly raju and radha in our animated uh series like uh, ken and barbie are uh, of course uh, dolls you know dolls dolls like a boy and girl respectively and uh, that is of course kenneth carson and barbara millison roberts are the respective full names of these fictional characters ken and barbie like raju radha boban molly uh, okay you have uh, uh, cartoon and uh, animated characters so they are just the fictional characters fictional characters in the american popular culture and uh, ken is of course barbie's boyfriend and ken is boy barbie is girl that is so here uh, lee mccobe says that i was more ken than barbie what does it mean he is more boyish than girlish now we move on to the next stanza it has nothing to do with hating my body okay i am more boyish than girl i am not boy not girl but i didn't want to hate my body i just love it enough to let it go i love my body i can just forget that i am a transgender i am upset but i don't hate my body i treat it like a house this is my house this is the room where i live so i don't want to hate my body i accept my body endayalum njan id ende sharirama aanu enikku jeevichey pattu appo njan boy alla girl um alla i have i'm more boyish than girl all right I, i don't hate my body i accept it right and when your house is falling apart you do not evacuate right look at that this is very painful my house is falling apart okay maybe your house has some problem your your very physical house the the place where you live you renovate it okay you renovate it and you still continue staying there similarly your body namukku or asugam vanna nammal marikkumo no we shouldn't we have to continue our life okay so my house is falling apart I'm neither a boy nor a girl but I don't want to kill myself my body is my body maybe I am a transgender I don't want to die I don't want, I shouldn't kill myself all right I do not evacuate that's that's bad evacuate here means suicide kill oneself right so I do not evacuate you make it comfortable enough to house all your insides now uh, this is my body and I have to of course uh, accept it and I just uh, uh make it comfortable i'm just trying to be comfortable with, with my body you make it pretty enough to invite guests over you make it the floor board strong enough to stand on okay so whatever problems you have with your house you will live live there 
you don't evacuate that so whatever problems you have with your body you will not die you will just try to be comfortable with your body you will just try to be comfortable with yourself and other people your family and your friends similarly you will just try to live on and remember my dear students this stanza shows how much a transgender wishes to live life is precious to everybody life is precious to each of us maybe you are a man maybe you are a woman maybe you are a transgender but you are a living human being you are a living human being and you wish to live your life it's not your problem that you are a transgender does it mean that transgenders transgenders because they have some anatomic problem should they just die no transgenders have the very life of the other men and women so they must be permitted to live their life they must be respected they must be accepted they have the same life my mother fears now uh, we come to the next stanza in which uh, the transgender lee macobe speaks about the very tension and worry and fear of his mother because the transgender community transgenders face a lot of problems and his mother is upset about his future now let's look at that my mother fears i have named myself after fading things what is that my mother thinks fears i have named myself after fading things so fading things what do you mean by fading things fading things are okay disappearing things fading things are disappearing something that is vanishing mangi maranju pogunadinaan nammal fading nu parayana why fading things transgenders fade away they just vanish slowly samuham transgenders ne angeekarikkatha kaaranam kudumbathil avare seekarikkatha kaaranam oru shaabamayitto bharamayitto avare kaanunnathu kaaranam okay allade mattu pala tarathilulla problems kaaranam transgenders fade away they just vanish they go away they die they commit suicide they are killed okay so his mother also thinks that he is going to fade away because transgenders face a lot of problem and his mother is upset and worried remember a child is a child to the mother what will be the problem with the child okay my child is my child whether he is normal or abnormal okay so it's very painful for his mother my mother fears i have named myself after fading things my mo- his mother thinks that he is going to die he is going to maybe commit suicide or maybe his life is going to be a tragedy as she counts the echoes left behind by M- mia mia hall and mia hall lila lila alcon blake a uh, brockington so who are they mia hall lila alcon and uh, blake brockington are transgenders who had tragedy in their life say for example come to page 64 you have mia hall who is mia hall mia hall is a 27 year old transgender woman who was shot dead by police in baltimore united states of america on 30th march 2015 for taking a wrong turn on the road the police version claimed that she had a history of robbery and prostitution but the transgender community describes incident as an example of transphobia fear of the transgender so mia hall was killed by the police in united states of america because of the fear of transgender and lila alcon an american transgender girl who committed suicide lila alcon at the age of 17 to stop discrimination and abuse after being struck by a semi trailer ohio united states of america so 
Lila Alcon was struck by a trailer and uh, uh, a, 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 in fact a, a, a truck and she committed suicide. In her suicide note, she cited loneliness and alienation alongside with parental neglect as the key reasons to her life. So Lila Alcon, transgender, committed suicide because of parental negligence, alienation and loneliness. And Blake Brockington, Blake Brockington is another American transgender who committed suicide after being struck by several vehicles in Charlotte, North Carolina, United States of America on 23rd March 2015 before venturing, before turning 19. So another uh, transgender who is attacked by the society is Blake Brockington. He was the first openly trans or uh, he was he was the first openly transgender high school homecoming king of the state. Okay, and the transgender is Blake Brockington again, a uh, victim of uh, attack on the transgender. All right, now we have one more transgender that is Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner, another transgender. William Bruce Jenner. He was an American television. No, no, no. It's not uh, transgender. Uh, Olympic gold medal winning athlete in decathlon in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. 2015, Jenner came out as a trans woman. Yeah, again, a transgender trans woman and took the name Caitlin Mary Jenner and completed the sex reassignment surgery in 2017. So here we have names of uh, transgenders. Okay. And what happened to them? They fading faded away they are fading away so mia hall lila alcon blake brockington she fears that i will die without uh, a whisper so lee mccobb's mother or any transgender mothers think that uh, transgenders are going to die that i'll turn into what a shame conversations at the bus stop okay so when people see transgenders, they say, what a shame. Oh, oh, custom. He is a transgender. That's a transgender. She claims I have turned myself into a, mo a mausoleum. Mausoleum is a tomb, a, a graveyard. All right. So my mother, the, every transgender mothers think that a transgender is a graveyard. Yeah, maybe a tomb, a, a transgender will soon die because society is not accepting transgenders, right? That I am a walking casket. You know what is a casket? Casket is a coffin, shower manjam. Casket is a box, a wooden box, which contain the body or the dead body. So transgenders, okay, their mothers think that transgenders, they are coffins. They are caskets. Bo boxes containing dead bodies. News headlines have turned my identity into a spectacle. Bruce Jenner on everyone's lips while the brutality of living in this body becomes an asterisk at the bottom of equality pages. Okay, so Bruce Jenner is again another American who was a trans woman, not a woman, not a man, a trans woman and uh, who just uh, became uh, an Olympic medal winner in the decathlon. Okay, and again, right, uh, trans woman and uh, faced a lot of problems as a transgender. And now remember, the transgenders are asterisks, asterisks. What is an asterisk? Asterisk is a star sign, maybe in a text, uh, which is going to have a footnote. Transgenders, what is what is a transgender? You have to give an explanation. Not a man, not a woman, trans woman like that, right? I am, I am in fact uh, a walking casket, and uh, uh, on everyone's lips, while the brutality of living in this body becomes an asterisk at the bottom of equality pages. And equality pages, remember, okay. There are newspapers discussing gender equality, but even in those newspapers discussing gender equality, like uh, uh, transgender issues, 
the names of certain people are written with asterisk and underneath is written that is a trans woman or a trans man no one ever thinks of us as human very painful cry of lima cop nobody considers us as human beings because we are more ghost than flesh most of the people consider us as ghost than flesh ഞങ്ങളെ ശവങ്ങളായിട്ടാണ് ആൾക്കാർ കാണുന്നത് ഞങ്ങളെ ഭൂതങ്ങളായിട്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഗോസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് മരിച്ചിട്ട് വരുന്ന പ്രേതമായിട്ടാണ് ഞങ്ങളെ കാണുന്നത് നോ വൺ എവർ തിങ്സ് ഓഫ് അസ് എസ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ബിക്കോസ് വി ആർ മോർ ഗോസ് ദൻ ഫ്ലഷ് ബിക്കോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഫിയർ ദാറ്റ് മൈ ജെൻഡർ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഈസ് എ ട്രിക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ടു ബി പെർവേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് സം പീപ്പിൾ സം പീപ്പിൾ ഇൻ ദ സൊസൈറ്റി സേ ദാറ്റ് ഓക്കെ വി പ്രിറ്റൻ ടു ബി ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡേഴ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് വി വാണ്ട് ടു ബി പെർവേർട്ട് തെമ്മാടിത്തരം കാണിക്കാനും മോശമായി ജീവിക്കാനും ആയിട്ട് അഭിനയിക്കുന്നതാണ് നടിക്കുന്നതാണ് നാട്യമാണ് ഇതെന്നും പറഞ്ഞ് ഞങ്ങളെ സമൂഹം അധിക്ഷേപിക്കുന്നു ആക്രമിക്കുന്നു ബിക്കോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഫിയർ ദാറ്റ് മൈ ജെൻഡർ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഈസ് എ ട്രിക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ടു ബി പെർവേഴ്സ് പെർവേഴ്സ് ഈസ് ടു ബി ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് മേ ബി ടു ഹാവ് പെർവേഷൻ ഇൻ യുവർ ലൈഫ് maybe of course to lead the life of a homosexual the lead the life of a cure or a lesbian or something of that sort so people say that we just pretend to be transgenders that it ensnares traps them without their consent that my body is a feast for their eyes and hands and once they have fed off my cure they will regurgitate all the parts they did not like now these lines Uh, Lee Macabe tells us how normal people use transgenders as uh, of course sexual toys people some people who are normal just go to the transgenders and they just have sex with these transgenders because they want to know what uh, the body of uh, maybe they want to know the body or the anatomy of transgenders right rather they they want to have sex with them but after that they just uh ridicule these transgenders this is it right uh that it exists to be perverse that it ensnares them without their consent that my body is a feast for their eyes and hands so all these normal people they come and uh, touch me they have uh, they just look at me they hold me they have sex with me and uh, once they had fed off my cure cure means my my being strange my being a transgender my being a minority fed up of fed off my cure fed off my condition of uh, physique they will regurgitate regurgitate is chewing and chewing and chewing from the bowels charvida charvanam jiga chavachidana veendum chavikkuga all the parts they did not like okay they came to me they had sex with me and they thereafter they will say that uh, i i i had such a strange anatomy because i am a transgender they will say that they did not like that part of my body they will say that that part of the body was ugly that is regurgitating so this is the very pathetic experience of transgender people transgender people being victimized by the normal people normal people go to the transgenders normal i don't say normal it doesn't mean that transgenders are abnormal i'm sorry okay men and women of course have sex with transgenders and after having sex with transgenders they ridicule transgenders that is again another pain of the transgenders they will put me back into the closet hang me with all the other skeletons like uh, you have skeletons in maybe a museum or a medical laboratory or a medical uh, uh, museum they after having sex with me they just uh, keep me my body my skeleton back in my room rather they leave my body i will be the best attraction so now i am a transgender they just look at me and they go back so the people come to go to the transgenders to have sex with them after that they just just go away and other transgenders come and look at the transgender's body again and they go back again okay can you see how easy it is to talk people into coffins so our community is just uh, treating us in a very very 
pathetic way. They just ridicule us. They just kill us. And they just keep us in coffins. Can you see how easy it is to talk people into coffins? They speak ugly things. They speak rude things. And we are treated like corpses or dead bodies to misspell their names on gravestones. And again, they just write our names in very careless way. And uh, we are treated in a very silly way. We don't, we don't get uh, uh, maybe our rights as human beings. And people still wonder why there are boys rotting. And we see a lot of transgender boys are rotting. Why transgender boys are killed? And they decay, they rot. Okay. One of the transgender boys and girls who are in the American world, they are in the world, they are in the road, they are in the highway, they are in the world, 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 that is rotting. Something is rotting in the city of Denmark. All right. So, this is the pathetic condition of transgenders. People still wonder why there are boys rotting. They go away in high school hallways. Transgender boys walking in the high school veranda. They are afraid of becoming another hashtag in a second. Afraid of classroom discussions becoming like judgment day. So, sometimes transgender boys and girls are discussed. And uh, they are discussing uh, the discussion. All the discussion is just uh, hashtag. Okay. And it is just becoming uh, like a judgment day. So very uh, cruel, uh, unsympathetic, brutal discussion of the body of transgenders inside the classroom. Very, very, very painful for transgenders. That is about the way transgenders are treated in United States of America or other parts of the world. Afraid of classroom discussions becoming like judgment day. Judgment day, you know, it is, of course, the last, uh, uh, right, uh, 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 I mean, uh, second coming of uh, Jesus or after after death, of course, I mean, you have, uh, you die and uh, judgment day, you will either go to heaven or hell. So like way, like that way, you are being uh, interrogated and uh, uh, just questioned inside the classroom just because you are a transgender. It's very painful for a transgender. And now, oncoming traffic is embracing more transgender children than parents. And oncoming traffic, maybe transgender boys and girls walk in the highway. And oncoming traffic is embracing, what does it mean? Trucks, okay, buses, trucks, cars, etc. When they see transgenders, they hit them and they kill them. So, a lot of accidents. And transgenders are killed in accidents in the highways. Oncoming traffic is embracing more transgender children than parents. Okay. So a lot of transgender children are killed. And their parents still continue their life. They still... Uh, normally, of course, parents die thereafter children. But now these children, they are transgenders. They are killed. They, they are killed once... Maybe sometimes they are killed, sometimes they commit suicide. Somehow they are not permitted to live. They are not treated like human beings. That's very, very important. I wonder how long it will be before the trans suicide not start to feel redundant. Okay. Now, a lot of suicides of uh, transgenders. And I wonder how long it will be before, how long it will continue, how long it will be before the transgender suicide not start to feel redundant. Redundant means superfluous, right? Before we realize that our bodies become lessons about sin, way before we learn how to love them. Okay, now let us please understand that we are, we, 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 our bodies are, okay, just uh, bodies. We are just human beings. I wonder how long it will be before the trans suicide notes start to feel redundant before we realize that our bodies become lessons about sin, right? Uh, way before we learn how to love them, okay? So uh, please understand that uh, the bodies of uh, transgenders are not, of course, sinful. 
transcendence are transcendence not because of any curse or any sin. Okay? So, I don't know how long we will have to wait for a society to accept us. Like God didn't save all this breath and mercy. Like my blood is not the wine that washed over Jesus' uh, feet. Okay? My prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. I can't speak anything right now. Okay? I can't speak anything anymore because the condition of uh, the transgenders is, is very, very pathetic. And here we have a reference to, uh, of course, uh, wash Jesus' feet. Wash Jesus' feet is a sinful woman in town. Wash Jesus' feet as the at the residence of rich Pharisee in the Bible, Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. The speaker brings in comparison between the sinful woman of the Bible and oneself. The line indicates the pessimism of the transgender person whose prayers are unanswered. Okay, and now uh, Lee McCobie, a transgender, says that the sinful woman in the Bible, she just washes the feet of Jesus with, uh, of course, uh, perfume, thinking that her sin is going to be just, uh, 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 it, it is just going to be maybe uh, sanctified. Sanctified. Similarly, here, here we have to understand, uh, uh, we have to understand the fact that uh, uh, transgenders, the condition of transgenders is very pathetic. Okay, they are looked upon as sin. They are looked upon as taboo and uh, like God didn't save all this breath and mercy. Like my blood is not the wine that washed over Jesus' feet. Okay, maybe I wish if I could, if my blood could purify maybe the sin of the transgenders. But my prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. I cannot pray any longer. I cannot pray any longer because... My prayers are not heard. My prayers are not heard. My, my, my God doesn't listen to me. My condition doesn't change. My prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. This is the pathetic condition of Lee Makop. This is the pathetic condition of transgenders. Maybe I am finally fixed. Maybe I am finally fixed means at last, at last, uh, maybe my uh, my problem is going to be uh, resolved rather okay maybe at last uh, maybe i am finally fixed means at last i'm going to be okay maybe sometimes maybe okay i may be accepted yeah maybe i am going to be accepted but i'm i don't know i'm not sure i don't know if i'm going to be accepted as a transgender i know i am a transgender and if i told the society accept, accepts me maybe i am um, finally fixed Maybe I just don't care. I don't care. Maybe society is not go, going to accept me. And I don't care whether I am a transgender. Maybe God finally listened to my prayers. I wish if God could just uh, hear my prayers. Maybe if, if, if I am okay. And what is the prayer of the transgender? The prayer of the transgender is uh, to, 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 to be accepted by the community. To be accepted by the society. Oh my God. If I am accepted as a transgender. Maybe I am going to be accepted. But more than half of the heart of uh, the mind of uh, the transgender. Tells him that he is not going to be accepted. So the poem is ending on a pessimistic tone. There is no hope. There is not no hope. So uh, this poem is of course a very powerful poem by Lee McCobb. And uh, Lee McCobb is asking us. To grant, to, to, to hand over, of course, uh, to grant the human rights of the transgenders. Uh, uh, Limakov is asking us to be nice to transgenders. Limakov is asking the world to, of course, consider the rights of, uh, the human rights of the transgenders. Now, the poem is over. Now, we will come to the questions and answers. We'll just have a look at the questions and answers. Uh, first question. Where did the speaker make a prayer for the first time? The speaker 
made a prayer for the first time in a glass stained cathedral in a glass stained cathedral question number 2 identify the figure of speech my tiny body drooping like a question mark all over the wooden pew okay it is uh, simile the figure of speech is simile we have a comparison of the body to a question mark it's a simile now we have the third question i treat it like a house what what is treated like a house the body of the transgender the transgender is treating the body as a house next question who is the trans woman shot dead by police in baltimore referred to in the poem the trans woman shot by shot to death by police in baltimore is okay mia hall m y a x a l l a 27 year old transgender woman was shot dead by police in baltimore next question who is the olympic gold winning decathlete mentioned in what it's like to be transgender and the olympic gold winning decathlete is bruce jenner b r u c e bruce jenner j j e n n e r bruce jenner now a question uh, short questions number 1 what did the speaker ask jesus in the first prayer the speaker in its in his first prayer asked jesus to fix him to correct his gender problems to fix him question number 2 explain but shame lingered as an after taste okay so li mukab mokobe uh, in the poem what it is like transgender tells that uh, he went on uh, uh, it tells us that he prayed and prayed and prayed about the mystery of his body he thought that jesus would save him but his body did not change his problems did not uh, change okay and uh, the condition of being a transgender continued like uh, sugar uh, being melted in the tongue and sweetness lingering after uh, the 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 uh, melting of sugar so uh, shame lingered as an after taste is the shame of being a transgender continued despite after many years of prayer unheard prayer next question what did the mother do to reintroduce the speaker to sanctity this the poet's lee macobe's mother told him that he is a miracle and he could be either a boy or a girl and uh, said that he is of course uh, uh, very very sacred okay said that he is a miracle he could either be a boy or a girl next question how did the speaker describe the face i decided to be a boy okay now he says as he is growing up okay he could be a boy or a girl and he was more boyish than a girl he was more ken than a barbie and uh, he decided to be a boy and it was of course uh, very cute of him as a boy now the next question explain i was the mystery of an anatomy okay the mystery of an anatomy uh, is uh, a reference to the very mysterious physical condition of a transgender neither a boy nor a girl that is the mystery of an anatomy now short question 6 how did the narrator observe the boy would face at the age of uh, 12 okay uh the narrator at the age of 12 so or rather experienced the fact that uh, uh he was no more cute it was he was no more cute he lost his uh lovely cute handsome appearance okay when i turned 12 the boy face wasn't deemed cute anymore no more cute 
Now the next question. What did the nostalgic aunts remind the speaker at the age of 12? Okay, the nostalgic aunts reminded the poet at the age of 12 that uh, he must have the attitude of a girl because he must, uh, a girl should bring a husband home and a girl is for heterosexuality and childbearing. And the transgender Lee Makobe was not girlish and uh, his aunts ridiculed him. Now, next uh, question, number eight. How was the speaker called a lesbian? The speaker was called a lesbian because his classmates wanted to know his anatomy, his identity, his gender, and uh, because uh, he just uh, 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 played hide and seek or just concealed his identity, gender identity as of, of a transgender, maybe they just uh, thought that something there is something strange about Lee McCobie or this transgender, and they just called him a lesbian, thinking that he has some strange sexuality. Question number nine, what is meant by the expression, I was more Ken than Barbie? I was more Ken than Barbie is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, a very uh, vivid representation of uh, the transgender condition of uh, Lee Makobe, in which he confirms the fact that he is more boyish than girly girls like uh, Ken and Barbie are uh, cartoon fictional characters in American popular culture and fiction and Ken is the boyfriend of Barbie the doll okay next question she my mother fears that I'll die without a whisper why okay the mother of Lee Makobe knows what's happening to transgender boys and girls and uh, Lee Makobe's or a transgender's mother is afraid that uh, her son or daughter who is a transgender is going to be fading, that is going to be killed by a trans, a society which is suffering from transphobia, fear of transgenders. Next question, who was Mia Hall? Mia Hall is a transgender woman who was killed by the police in United States of America. 27 year old transgender woman was shot dead by police in Baltimore, United States of America on 30th March, 2015. Now the next question, who was Leela Alcon? Leela Alcon is an American transgender girl who committed suicide at the age of 17 to stop discrimination and abuse after being struck by a semi-trailer in Ohio State of United States of America. In her suicide note, she cited loneliness and alienation alongside with parental neglect and of course, uh, she killed herself. Next question, Blake Brockington. Who is Blake Brocking Brockington? Blake Brockington is an American transgender man who committed suicide at the age of 17 to stop discrimination and abuse after being struck by a semi-trailer in, I'm sorry, okay, an American transgender man who committed suicide after being struck by several vehicles, several vehicles in Charlotte, North Carolina, United States of America on 23rd March, 2015. Next question, why does no one ever think of transgenders are, as human? Nobody thinks transgenders as human they think that tran being transgender is a trick of transgenders to be perverts, okay? And uh, they don't accept transgenders. They look transgenders as uh, just uh, ghosts and uh, the society, people in the society, they just uh, uh, ill treat or uh, just torture and kill transgenders. They, they think that uh, maybe be becoming a transgender is uh, because of sin, because of curse. Explain now oncoming traffic is embracing more transgender children than parents. Okay, it's very simple. Lee Makobe in these lines tells us the very, very terrifying reality of uh, the attack on 
the atrocity on transgender community. A lot of transgender boys and girls are killed in the highways of United States of America, like Mia Hall, Lila Alcon, and Blake Brockington. Next question, my prayers are now getting stuck in my throat. Why did the speaker fear so? Uh, Lee McCabe says, my prayers are now getting stuck in my throat because the condition of transgenders doesn't change. The condition of transgenders is continuing to be very, very miserable. More transgenders are killed and uh, the, the prayer of transgenders to help them is unheard. And uh, he says that my prayer is getting stuck in my throat. Now we have paragraph questions. Okay, very simple. Comment on the poetic style in what it is like to be transgender. Okay, the poetic style of uh, uh, the poem, uh, what it is like transgender is a very confessional style. Okay, it is a very straightforward narration of the speaker. It, 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 the speaker is a, uh, of course, uh, transgender, and it is, of course, uh, Lee Makobe, and it is an autobiographical poem. And Lee Makobe tells us very painfully about different stages in uh, stages of growth in the life of a transgender and uh, uh, very, very powerfully the poet uh, uh, expresses the pain, the very stigma, the very uh, kind of uh, uh, alienation, isolation and the very, uh, very, very atrocities impinged on the transgender in very, very powerful language. The poet uses a lot of figures of speech like uh, similes, metaphors, simple, straightforward poem, and a lot of dialogues, conversations, and a lot of uh, references and allusions. Uh, the names of a lot of uh, 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 transgenders and very, very powerfully, the poet tells us that uh, the condition of transgenders is very pathetic. Now we come to of course, uh, it's a wonderful poetic style. Simple, elegant, straightforward uh, 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 language and uh, very, very powerful representation of uh, the experience of being a transgender. Now we have the next question. Boyhood face in what it is like to be a transgender. Okay, as a boy, the transgender, uh, okay, is asked uh, by his mother to decide whether he wants to be a girl or a boy. And it was, of course, just being uh, cute. All right, uh, it, being a boy was rather cute and handsome. And he decided to be a boy because he was more boyish. But later when he became 12, he understood that uh, being cute is not at all cute anymore. Being a boy is not at all cute anymore. And he just uh, faced a lot of problems, okay? Now, briefly describe the alienation of transgender in relation to what it is like to be a transgender. The transgender in the poem, what it is like to be transgender is alienated all through. As a child, he prays, God doesn't hear his prayer. He's alienated even at his home. Only his mother listens to him. He comes to school. He goes out to the society, outside, in the society, in the highway, everywhere transgenders are isolated. Many are killed, Mia Hall, Lila Alcon, Blake Brockington, a lot of uh, transgenders killed. All this is, of course, powerful poem about the alienation of transgenders. Next question, the pessimism in what it is like to be transgender. Pessimism is lack of hope. From the beginning till the end, the poem is full of pessimism. No hope at all. Because beginning, the boy prays unto God. Jesus, please fix me. He stays in the cathedral after the prayers, after the Holy Mass. He is kneeling down and praying, thinking that Jesus will fix him. No. Looks at his mother. Looks at everybody in the family. Aunts, uncles, everybody. Nobody helps him. Not even God help him. Now outside in the society is alienated. So beginning till the end, at last he says, my prayer is getting stuck in my throat. That is very articulation of the fact that the 
poem is pessimistic, no hope. Condition of transgenders is going to be pathetic and tragic. Comment on the ending of Lee Makop's poem. Same as I said, the ending of uh, the poem is a very realistic affirmation of the fact that the condition of uh, transgenders is going to be hopeless, no hope for them. Our society is not going to change. The human rights of transgenders is, will continue will continue to be violated. The pathetic condition of transgenders is not, are not going to change. That is the end. And of course, textual things can be added. Now, uh, we have the essay question. What it is like to be a transgender is a documentation of the identity crisis and denial of basic human rights of uh, the transgender discuss. How does Lee Cobb convey the horror of being a transgender in what it is like to be a transgender? Okay, so this poem of Lee Cobb what it is like transgender is about the violation of human rights of transgenders. Lima Cobb very powerfully copies or delineates all the problems transgenders face in any society, anywhere in the world, no matter whether or uh, US or UK, wherever transgenders are. Okay, they are always alienated, childhood, babyhood days to adulthood. All the time they are alienated. They are uh, uh, treated very badly, ill-treated all the time, looked upon as mysteries, looked upon as strange human beings. Nobody cares for them. They are looked upon as sin. They are looked upon as curses and they suffer from alienation, isolation, and soul-killing boredom. And many a transgender is brutally killed. Many a transgender is attacked by police. Many a transgender has to commit suicide. We have to understand. Lee Makobe tells us that a transgender is a human being. A transgender is having the very life of a man or a woman. It is the same life. The heart that throbs in the body of anybody is exactly like the very heart that throbs in the body of a transgender. So we have to love, accept, admit, and care for the rights of uh, the human rights, the fundamental rights of the transgenders. Governments in India, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in America, in Australia, in all the seven continents must make amendments in the constitution. There must be, of course, new reforms and regulations and new rules to guarantee the human rights of uh, transgenders. Okay. With this, we come to the end of uh, this wonderful poem, What It Is Like to Be Transgender by Lee Cobb. It's almost two hours. Uh, thanks a lot for listening to me. If you find this lecture useful, you can just like it. You can just comment it, of course, and you can subscribe my channel. You can ask other students in other colleges of uh, the University of Calicut uh, who study this essay or uh, this poem to subscribe my channel. Please like and comment and subscribe my channel and uh, give your support. May God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with me. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful afternoon. God bless you.